Welcome to the channel. Uh, today's video is going to be a special one. We are taking part in the Heart for Rocks collaboration. Katie did put this together and thank you so much, Kate, for putting this together. Basically, it is a uh, series of women-led rock hounding channels here on YouTube telling our story, how we got into rock hounding and uh, each creating a small project that Kate is going to add to a read and then she's going to auction off that read for charity. So definitely check out the other videos in the series um, on towards the end of the week, but uh, you know, go back and check out the other ones. I'll have a little link below. So with that, I'll talk a little bit about how I got into this. So I started as a kid. Um, I remember being eight, maybe 10 years old and going to the Smoky Mountains on vacation. And I remember in particular two things. I remember in Gatlinburg, all the little gift shops that had the little kiosks where you fill a little pouch of rocks for like five bucks um, and just becoming absolutely obsessed with those. And my other memory was being up in the Smoky Mountains and just being in awe of the, the mountains and the nature. And I remember finding some rocks that had some garnets in them and they weren't like gem quality or anything. I actually have a piece here, um, but at the time I thought they were the coolest thing in the world. I was like this kid who found these garnets and that to me just lit a fire. Um, from then on out, any vacation we went on, I was on my best behavior, hoping to go to whatever the, the gift shop, rock shop was in the, the town we were visiting. Um, at school, I became the one that took in my rocks for any show and tell type of event or like a science project. Um, and eventually I decided to get my degree in geology and that was absolutely the best decision. The first time I was exposed to stopping at road cuts and picking up cool rocks and fossils that I found myself were in some of these school field trips. Before that I had never really been exposed to the actual rock hound side of rock collecting. Part of my, my geology degree was going out to the Black Hills for five weeks on a field camp. We basically were running around the National Forest and doing a bunch of mapping projects. And we did a lot of rock collecting while we were out there too. And that, that really helped uh, fuel that fire. Um, I still have a lot of the cool rocks that I, I collected out in South Dakota that first time. And I mean, the Black Hills are just beautiful. I, I love that area so much. It's so magical. Uh, we're actually going back again this, this August. But uh, so that, that really fueled that rock hound fire inside of me. Um, after I graduated, I became a park ranger for a little bit. I didn't become a geologist right away. Um, I, I started as an intern at Natural Bridges National Monument out in Utah. And that was really the first time I had a chance to be alone out in nature without you know, family or friends or uh, schoolmates. I was really able to just wander the canyons aimlessly alone, just soaking in all the geology and um, exploring new places, all these national parks. It was really, really a special time. Um, so I spent a little bit of time out there and then I got my first real park ranger job out at Wind Cave in South Dakota. So I got to go back to the Black Hills and this time I was giving tours to 40 people at a time, 200 feet below the surface of the earth in this awesome, awesome limestone cave system. Um, definitely worth checking it out if you're ever out there. But I did, did the park ranger stuff for, for a couple more years after that. I did another season out in Utah at Canyonlands National Park. And then um, an internship at Vicksburg National Military Park where I actually was doing like a geoscience internship. So by the time I was doing my internship in Mississippi, I was dating my now husband, so I decided it was kind of time to move back home to Ohio and settle down a little bit. Um, I did one more season with the Park Service here in Ohio before I uh, just started taking some GIS classes, which is like mapping, um, and getting my first job as like an actual geologist. Um, where I was doing a lot of groundwater mapping and working with water wells and getting more into the hydrogeology side of things. Um, initially, that job had me living about two hours away from, from uh, my husband, Alex. We weren't married yet at the time. But when it was finally time for us to move in together, it wasn't really going to work with the two-hour drive. So I've, 
I have since switched jobs, um, still doing a lot of groundwater, hydrogeology related stuff, um, and I really like it. But I, uh, when I did finally move in here, I had one thing that I didn't have before, and that was a garage and space to kind of get into to lapidary and even just the collecting in general, more hardcore. Um, I know early in the pandemic, someone had listed a bunch of lapidary equipment on Facebook Marketplace, and I took the chance and bought this set of used equipment. Um, I drove two hours to go pick it up, and it was a great decision because I got my first rock saw and my first flat lap and a faceting machine, which I sold because I just I can't get into faceting. Um, and just kind of really started to dive into the lapidary side of things. It was probably around the same time that I realized that people made YouTube videos about rock collecting. Um, I never really thought that that was a thing that people would do before, so that's why I'd never done it previously. Um, I, I was watching, you know, a couple different channels at first. I think I was planning a trip up to Michigan, so I was watching... Um, a lot of Michigan Rocks videos and um, planning a trip to South Dakota at the time. So I was watching a couple of the O'Kellison's old videos. Um, and I started seeing more and more of the different channels and um, mostly male-dominated ones. I think Kate, with Katie did, was the, the first female-led channel I saw. And it was kind of inspirational to, to see, you know, another woman out doing it. Um, and I came to the conclusion that, that I can do this too. Like I, I know enough about rocks. I do enough rock hounding and collecting and stuff. Um, I have the knowledge base to, to talk about rocks. Uh, and there weren't really a lot of women led channels at the time. There were a couple, I just, some of them I hadn't discovered yet. Some of them just didn't exist yet. So I decided to start my channel, um, in the hopes that, you know, maybe some, some kid who was like me back in the Smoky Mountains would see it and see that it's a girl just like her collecting rocks and, you know, maybe it would be inspirational to someone. And that I think would be really neat. But either way, it's it's been a lot of fun. I've been a little bit on the down low for the last couple months just kind of doing other things with life. I haven't made a lot of videos, but I have a lot of plans to get back into it, so... Hopefully this will kick off me kind of getting my channel started back up. But anyway, so that's my story. Um, it's not the most exciting or inspirational or anything, but it's it's kind of how I got to where I am today. Uh, anyway, here's my finished product project. I, uh, I made a stained glass flower um, using Botswana agate, which is one of my absolute favorites. Um, obviously it's not a rock I collected myself. Most of the rocks here in Ohio are fossils and flint, and sometimes you can get some nice, uh, translucent flint, but for the most part, it's all pretty solid stuff. Not really great for stained glass. So I decided to go with a stone that I think is really, really pretty. Um, just the banding in Botswana agates is just absolutely stunning. So I made that for my petals. I did use glass for our little leaf here, and, uh, and I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I am fairly new to stained glass making, so it's only been a couple months since I got into it. And it's hard to solder agate. Um, glass is a lot easier, <laughs> I've learned. But uh, it came out good, um, so it should be... Uh, so Kate should have it at this point. Hopefully it'll, it made it to her in time uh, for the auction. Thank you all so much for watching and for giving me a chance to share my story. Have a great day and rock on.